Good morning, it's Iowimala, and it's Thursday, June the 17th. It's uh, looking like it's getting very hot around the country, especially in the Southwest, so to friends in Las Vegas and Los Angeles, I hope you're Hope you're able to stay stay cool. We're getting up to 90 around this area today. So that's pretty hot for us this time of the summer. So lots going on. Hopefully uh, this well this heat may be part of what we have to just get used to. So today I wanted to read a little bit from Dhamma Everywhere by Sayadaw U Tejaniya. And we've read from this book before, but I wanted to go back and read a little bit more really about uh, mindfulness practice and actually how we want to be thinking about our meditation. So if you're experienced or if you're new, I think it's just as valuable for us to, to refresh and maybe find things to uh, wake up our practice a little bit if we start to feel uh, a little like, well, is this taking me where I, what, where I want to go? We may need to just look at it and see see if there might be some changes we want to make. So I'll read a little bit, but hopefully I'll just read enough and then we can sit for the rest of our time together. There are just a couple of things I want to really hit. So this is, um, we were reading about starting with an object, and I, I will read this, use any object to develop awareness. So we have an object of our, for our attention when we practice. Uh, our breath is typically what we use. So this is, uh, use any object to develop awareness. Which is better, watching the breath or watching the abdomen? Neither is better than the other. They're the same. You should not prefer one over the other. If you do, you are attached to an object. The object at the nostrils is an object. The object at the abdomen is an object. Sound is an object. Heat is an object. In Vipassana, the eyes are one sense door and the ears are another sense door. Can you become aware with any object? Can you start with sounds? Do you have to go looking for sounds? Aren't they always there? You can know that there is sound. Take whatever object is available. There's no need to look, <clears throat> to look for very subtle objects. Vipassana uses any object to develop awareness stability of mind, and wisdom. A yogi, or a meditator, with awareness wisdom, awareness plus wisdom, that's his uh, little expression he uses, will use any object to develop sati, which is awareness or mindfulness, samadhi, which is that stable mind, and panya, which is wisdom instead of growing in craving, aversion, and delusion. The mind will grow in strength as you practice with ease and consistent awareness. Remember that the object is not important. The observing mind with the right attitude is more important. The mind has to be alert and interested. Dhamma practice is mind work, which means the mind has to have awareness. It also has to be alert and interested in studying itself. But because of our habitual tendency to pay more attention to what is happening out there, 
we very often forget to check ourselves. That is why we have to keep asking and reminding ourselves in order to maintain awareness. Momentum comes from practicing moment to moment. We want the kind of mindfulness that keeps going without a break so that we eventually have a natural momentum of awareness. Using a simile, we don't want the type of fire that burns in a flash. We want a long-lasting fire from durable materials like wood or coal. What is a good time for meditation? Many yogis have the idea that their meditation begins when they hear the bell. That's not so. The bell is there only to remind you. The right time to practice is from the time you wake up in the morning until the time you go to bed. At night, when you wake up in the morning, check yourself. Is the mind clear? Does it feel refreshed? Is it still sleepy? You wake up, but you want to continue sleeping. Is that difficult to know? Can you know all these? You just have to ask yourself. You are practicing to know the mind and the body. Let whatever happens, happens. It is not important. The mind's work is to know and to acknowledge. Which can happen in any posture or any activity. Sitting on the cushion does not necessarily mean you are practicing. Some yogis sit and fall asleep while others sit and daydream away. Is this considered meditation? Those are that's those are wonderful things to take into consideration. Just this mindfulness is is what we want to do is become more mindful every minute of our day from the time we wake up to the time we fall asleep. And so it become we want it to become something that becomes natural for us. And we all know, all of us with any experience know that uh, sitting doesn't sitting on a cushion or a, uh, in the right posture doesn't necessarily mean we're meditating. We could be daydreaming. We could be falling asleep, waiting and watching with intelligence. In this practice, we don't focus, control, exert, restrict, or interfere. These actions are motivated by defilements like craving, aversion, or delusion. It's a great point to start this section with. We have very often used a lot of wrong effort to get what we wanted or tended to exert a lot of energy to get rid of something. We've also done things blindly when we weren't sure what to do. With this practice, you just wait and watch with intelligence. What can you know naturally while you are sitting? You are not focusing or looking at any special object. You are aware and now you observe yourself. Are you aware that you are seated? What is happening in your body? What can you know naturally? Expanding abdomen, contracting abdomen, heat, sounds? Are you aware of your palms touching? Aren't your arms tired? How much effort do you need to know seeing, hearing, heat, cold, touching, or tiredness? Do you need to focus to know any of these? Is that tiring or difficult? See how easy observing is would it be tiring to practice like this the whole day? Ask yourself if you are aware and then begin the sitting or walking meditation. It is the nature of the mind to naturally take up the object it wants and will know as much as it is able to know. Keep checking when you are sitting, 
walking, eating, or doing daily activities. The mind can know what it wants, can't it? This knowing naturally is easier on you. Trying to find the object you want requires energy. Awareness alone is not enough. So far we've talked about awareness and waiting and watching with intelligence. Then there's a little quote that says, remember that awareness alone is not enough. There has to be wisdom present in the awareness. Where is that wisdom going to come from? There are three kinds of wisdom. So, and I'll say the Pali words, but then we'll go back into English. Three kinds of wisdom. Suttamaya Panya, Chintamaya Panya, and Bahavana Maya Panya. Suttamaya Panya is information you get from reading, from listening to Dhamma discourses, or from discussions with teachers. Chintamaya Panya is intelligence or knowledge acquired through thinking, reasoning, or intellectual analysis. Bhavana Maya Panya is insight or wisdom gained through direct experience. In short, we refer to them as information, intelligence, and insight. In this book, we may, we may refer to any of these as wisdom or be more specific at times by using the words information, intelligence, and or insight. Are you able to work on a certain subject matter if you don't know anything about it? You can perform only with right information. So how do you get right practice? Before you begin to practice, you need to have some accurate and complete information so that when you're practicing, wisdom in the form of information and intelligent are present with the awareness. You need right information and right attitude as wisdom for right practice. The Buddha called it mindfulness and clear comprehension and that's sati sampajana. Wisdom, uh, mindfulness, and clear comprehension. By having the right information on meditation, you won't run into problems using the wrong information. This information comes from listening to get Dhamma knowledge, asking for clarification, and having Dhamma discussions. I can give you information, and as yogis, you use this information and your own intelligence when you are practicing. You apply these two kinds of wisdom, information and intelligence, to the practice of meditation. Insight wisdom arises when the right kinds of conditions come together. And here's a section I really want to read, so this I'll read and we'll stop with this. Thinking while practicing. So, should you think or not think while practicing? You should be watchful of the kinds of thoughts that will increase craving, aversion, or delusion. When people say there shouldn't be thinking, they are referring to defilement-motivated thinking. Of course you can't help thoughts that just arise naturally, but you don't help these defilement-motivated thoughts to grow even more. You don't stop all sorts of thinking. You should think about the Dhamma you have heard, information you've read here or in a book, and reflect on the work you are doing and consider how you are practicing. This kind of thinking will help wisdom grow. This information I'm giving you now will be working in the mind when you are practicing, and you use the theory along with your own intelligence to work skillfully with the situation at hand. Utilizing the good qualities of the mind, 
your awareness, your energy, your wisdom. And applying intelligence is the work of mindfulness meditation. So here's a question. There is the object and there is the watching or observing mind. Which is more important? The answer, the watching or observing mind is more important. You need to pay attention to the observing mind if you want to understand the truth. Regularly check on how you are practicing. Can wisdom arise in the presence of craving, aversion, or delusion? What attitude is the mind practicing with? Check your attitude regularly. Don't be fixed are fixated on experiences. They will arise according to their nature and they only serve to keep the awareness. So we're not meditating for uh, some kind of uh, mystical experience or uh, something that uh, happens that, you know, excites us or uh, feels like a kind of energetic charge. He's saying, don't be fixated on those experiences. They will arise according to their nature, and they only serve to keep the awareness. A wise yogi uses the six sense objects to develop awareness, stability of mind, and wisdom. For those who are not so mature, the same objects will only increase craving, aversion, and delusion. So question, which object is better, the incoming, outgoing breath at the nostrils or the rising, falling motion of the abdomen? And we've done both of those in our practice together. Answer, it's neither. One object is not better than another. An object is just an object. If you perceive one object to be better than another object, you will naturally become attached to it. Later, when you can't pay attention to that specific object, then you may find that you are not able to practice. Craving will surely arise when choosing one object over another. Aversion comes in when you don't find the object of your choice. Believing that an object is good is really delusion at work. So, is it your responsibility to develop the object or the faculty of awareness and meditation? Objects will always present themselves according to their nature. Your work is to develop awareness. You are not trying to change anything that is happening, but working to strengthen and improve the mind that is not yet strong in awareness. Right now, there's little stability of mind, wisdom is weak, effort feeble, and faith lacking. Meditation is the work of cultivating and strengthening the spiritual faculties of sati, which is awareness or mindfulness, samadhi, which is stable mind, vidya is that the energy that we we, uh, raise up to use in our work. Sadha, which is faith, and Panya, wisdom. So meditate, meditation is a work of cultivating and strengthening those qualities. So, why don't we stop there? It's so easy to just keep reading because it's Again, he's a writer who just really uh, talks very clearly and and very much about the experience we're involved in when we meditate. So we're working to develop those qualities and we're working to uh, keep our focus on the, the, the awareness and not the object. So the objects will come to us 
through our sense doors. And with our breath, we can always use the breath, but we all know that uh, it, we, we become distracted in our practice. But whatever is distracting us can become the object. So we don't have to lose our focus. We don't have to give up. Uh, we can move our attention to the sound or the fe- feeling in the body or whatever, whatever our mind is uh, becoming distracted by. We can let that become the focus of, the, of our practice. And let's try that. We have a little bit of time together so we can begin. We can begin our practice. Uh, together, and then you can continue when I have to sign off. If you have time, just continue sitting and sit uh, with the light, light attention on your object. Even though, so that's why I almost always will say your attention can be on your breath, but let it be light. And it's often uh, the image of it being like a little butterfly sitting on the tip of your nose can help you remember that that attention on that particular object is very light. And so if something else rises up that needs to be uh, the object, then it's easy to make that move. So... Just allow your body to find that posture and let you know that right now we're going to be working with with our sitting, our practicing posture. But remember, you can be walking, you can be doing other things and still carry this mindfulness with you. And in fact, that's the goal. The goal is to be meditating uh, in every moment of the day, be practicing mindfulness. So, feel your body grounded. Let some part of your body be touching the earth. If you can, close your eyes. Be aware of the body breathing. Let that awareness be either as you breathe in and out through your nostrils, or it can be in observing your abdomen rising and falling. So we're aware that the body is breathing And our mind, our mind is being aware. Our mind is the observer. We've just been able, this who I am thing, this ego, this personality, Can, can move aside for a while. Let the mind and the body come to the forefront. So we keep our sense doors open. We've closed our eyes to 
cut out a little bit of the visual distraction. But there are sounds, there are taste, touch. There's our mind. So thoughts. And just allow the thoughts to come and go. And so when we want to work with those thoughts, remember what he's saying. We don't want to work with the thoughts that are defilements that involve desire or craving or aversion or anger, hatred, or the thoughts that are around delusion. Those are the thoughts that are caught up in defilements. So we don't need to focus on those. We can let them, we can just let them go. If there's a thought you have from what I just read or something you've been reading or from a talk you've heard, if those thoughts are arising That can be something for you to even have a focus, focus your awareness on. And just look at it. Just do the investigation technique. Just explore that thought, that idea. And that don't hang on to it too long or let it become something you're analyzing or mentally uh, fixating on. Just explore it a bit. You may have new insights about it, or it may be perplexing or confusing. Maybe you're not sure about how you feel about that idea or that thought. Just explore it. then you can let that go too. Some of the things we've read or heard or the Dhamma discussions we've had they may need to percolate a while before they all come together. We don't need to force them. And it's important to know which thoughts are defilements, which thoughts are caught up with greed, aversion, and delusion, 
we need to know the difference between those thoughts and the thoughts that bring clarity. Bring insight and wisdom. You can always keep coming back to your breath. You don't have to stay with thoughts. You don't have to stay on that object. You can come back and let your breath be an object. Or sound. Whatever sounds you hear, just be aware of them. See if they can just, just be there without creating a problem for you or distracting you. There may be something in your body, some feeling, or experience going on physically that draws your attention to it. You can just be with that. Investigate what, what is it that's calling your attention to your body. You may be in an, in an uncomfortable posture, or you may be too cold or too warm. Just explore that. Keep sitting if you can. I'm going to end. My time with you is up. It's uh, wonderful to see so many of you. Your, your names are familiar. So thank you for being part of my practice. And keep sitting if you can. And try to carry your awareness with you throughout the day. And just being physically in your body, appreciating and appreciating what your day brings to you. <clears throat> so I'll see you tomorrow morning, or you'll see me hopefully, 
and I hope you stay cool today and the heat doesn't become anything that uh, creates, creates problems for you. Thanks so much. Remember, may everything that we do today in our action, our speech, and in our thoughts be beneficial not only to us, but may it be beneficial to all sentient beings as we send it out as merit. Thank you.